Liverpool. Leeds runners are defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh, oh. Austin is through. And Warrington dominating. Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this is a full lad. Well, good evening and welcome to the last tackle at the end of what has been another completely normal and uneventful seven days in the world of rugby league. Delighted to be joined by the uh, highest ever England to Gate Britain cap holder, Adrian Morley. And we'll start on the international game, Moz. Inevitable news, but sad news nonetheless. We're going to have to wait another year for the World Cup. Yes, extremely disappointing decision. Uh, in my opinion, Australia and New Zealand were being uh, quite selfish in their... Um, take on the on the the matter i thought you know we could have done with a a bit of a boost rugby league could have and, and world cup would have been the exact tonic but now the decision has been made it would have been uh wouldn't have been as credible as a tournament without arguably two of the best teams in the competition so uh the decision has been made now now we've got 12 months now and let's hope in them 12 months we can really you know promote it and make it as big and as, as successful a competition as we can as i say we're all gutted at the moment but we can't do anything about the decision now we just need to crack on get it uh you know a huge event next year and uh you know let's hope it's the biggest and best ever which i'm sure it will be and john dutton and his team at the world cup have done a fantastic job up to this point i really feel for them to be put into this situation but as you say it's time to crack on now isn't it and, and look ahead to 2022 for this world cup and Hopefully the world's a much simpler place by then and we can have a fantastic tournament. Yeah, fingers crossed and hopefully the work all the uh, event organisers have done won't go to waste and you know hopefully they can just postpone it and add it on a year but it's, it, logistically it would have been a nightmare you know booking these venues and saying can we have it for a year later so hopefully it'll be a smooth transition but uh, with what's going on with, with Covid as you say hopefully it's uh, uh, a lot easier place to travel a lot easier place to get around and uh, you know let's hope it's a smooth transition and uh, onwards and upwards and you know we do need Australia and New Zealand in the competition so uh, if, if the only way we can have them in is by postponing it you know so be it and as I say let's hope it's uh, hope it's a belter next year. I suppose the tricky part at this point is avoiding a clash with the Football World Cup which is at a similar time. It's going to be, it'll be a fantastic two or three months of sport, but Rugby League needs its own platform at its own time, doesn't it? It does, it does. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I think the football's in the summer and I think it's, uh, it will just just about miss the, the Rugby League, you know, being in the autumn. So, uh, hopefully it won't, it won't clash, but you're right, you know, it'll be a, a feast of, of sport and uh, let's hope it's a, a great football World Cup and uh, obviously uh, the biggest and best Rugby League World Cup on record. It was, uh, you know, it, it was getting everyone excited, you know, the fact that there's 16 teams in and there's the women's competition and the, and the, and the wheelchair competition to run concurrently. It was uh, very, very exciting, uh, but we'll just have to keep the excitement on ice for uh, another 12 months now. Let's turn our attentions to the Betfred Super League and a big round of games in the weekend just gone. Of course, the headline act, St Helens versus the league leading Catalan Dragons. And Saints got the win, but Dragons played a few academy players, a few players coming through their system, and they did very well in the circumstances. They'll be very pleased about where they are in the table, but they'll be very pleased about what the future looks like as well. Definitely. Uh, it was interesting listening to Steve McNamara's comments after the game. And uh, it wasn't, you know, normally coaches, when they get a defeat, they're very downbeat, very uh, negative. But he was, he had nothing but praise for his side. He said he thought they played quite dumb in the, in the, in the first half at times, but he was just delighted with the, the fact that so many of these youngsters got an opportunity to play against arguably the best team in the competition, away from home in, in you know, tough conditions and they'll be better for that experience so uh, just because they got beat you know doesn't mean they can't learn from that and you're right Lewis I think they'll be delighted that they're, they're sitting pretty at the top of the table all the men beat twice in Super League once off Saints and once off uh, Warrington so I think they'll be uh, quite pleased and it's a really exciting few weeks coming up for them uh, coming, up, coming up to the playoffs. We talk about Catalans as potential league winners grand final winners having that second string of course is going to be so important across the whole season. Elsewhere in the Betfred Super League, Leeds, Castleford, 
really interesting game on Friday night. Saw Castleford come out on top. Plenty of needle always when those two teams come together. Wigan 16, Salford 6. Uh, Salford uh, really punched above their weight for a lot of that game. We're, we're right in it. Wigan just coming out on top in the end. So Helen's Catalans, as we've mentioned. Fantastic win for Huddersfield against Wakefield, Moz. Adrian Morley just starting to get the wheels turning there, perhaps. Yes, yes, he, um, Ian Watson, sorry, he said Adrian Marley, but uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, it's been a very slow start for, for, for Ian Watson there and, you know, he's been very adamant that just stick with the programme, stick with the process, we will get there and, you know, he has strung a, a number of wins together there at Huddersfield, so great win for them and they had to do it the tough way, they, they were getting beat 16-0 and then they managed to find a way to win, but that's what great teams do and they'll have their eye on, on, the, on the playoffs now and it's not out of the question for them to to get there, but it looks like you know the pieces of the jigsaw are, are coming into place for uh, for Ian Watson there at Huddersfield. Well, his former club, and of course one of your former clubs, Moz Salford Red Devils. It's been a big 24 hours or so of news for them. Brody Croft, a big signing from the NRL, but also some sad news as well. Lee Mossop had to call time on his stellar career. I caught up with their director of rugby, Ian Belize, a little bit earlier. Well, Ian, we'll start with the sad news. Lee Mossop announced his reti immediate retirement from the game yesterday and a player that came into the club probably a similar time to you actually and has established himself as a, a Salford Red Devils legend in the last few years. Yeah, uh, obviously it's been well documented. Lee's had uh, major shoulder surgery over the last few years, many years to be fair. I think he's had uh, eight or nine operations on that shoulder. Uh, and he, I think it's come to a stage... Uh, he actually did it first tackle of the year this year. Uh, we've we got it. Uh, he got he had surgery last year. Came back and he did it first tackle of the year. Saw him do it. Anyway, we've managed to sort of like nurse him through a little bit. And then it, a couple of weeks ago, he said he was feeling you know a bit of pain in there. So well, let's go and get it scanned. See see where we're at again. And then he saw the consultant uh, last week who said, look, you know. I can't do any more for you to continue your rugby career. If you want life after rugby with your family and your kids, I'll do a little operation that'll make you feel a lot better. And then obviously had that big decision to say he's going to retire. So we spoke about it. And then straight after the game on Friday in the dressing rooms, he announced it to the rest of the team that he was going to retire immediately. It was a, it was an emotional moment because the, the lads didn't know anything about it really. And he, and, he, and he sprung it on them. There wasn't a dry eye in sight, which is really... Uh, amazing to see from a group of players that are really tough, you know. So we respect his decision. We know he wants to, you know, spend some time with his family now. He's been a great leader, mate. As you know, he's he's took us to a grand final and a Challenge Cup, and he's been he's been a brilliant signing for the club. Absolutely first class. I had a good chat with him yesterday about what he wants to do post rugby, but there's no rush. I'd like to keep him on board somehow if we can as a club because he's got that leadership uh, within a within a player that you don't often see. On the bright side for Salford, of course, you've announced the signing of Brodie Croft, a, a, an Australian halfback out of favour in the NRL, coming to Salford Red Devils to rebuild his career a little bit. Sounds quite familiar. <laughs> yeah, it took a long time to do as well. I think uh, I was lucky last night. I think we started this process with him in about uh, May, I think, April, May. So it took a while. And obviously... You know, it's been well documented about him playing with the Brisbane Broncos at this moment. He's not quite hitting straps. That team's not going well. And this is, you know, this happens in life and sport. And we've had a habit of picking players up and from other clubs where maybe they need an opportunity. And I've always said it, you know, we are that club that can give a player an opportunity to come and play without any shackles and enjoy rugby again. And mate, He's got class. He's a good player. Uh, he just needs some chance now get out of the spotlight of the NRL uh, he's been under the cosh for a while and you can see it you know you can see it in him but if you look back to his early career he's only 24 Lewis so he's got plenty of time yet to keep on pushing with his career uh, he's already experienced he's played in the grand final as well so he's got everything he's got all them you know contributions that I look for in a player Well, Moz, let's start with the news about Lee Mossop. And you know better than most how tough it is in the middle. He's had 11 shoulder constructions throughout his career. He's had a stellar few years with Salford. He was only expecting to do one year with the club before retiring. He's managed to do nearly five. And wherever he's been, he's been a fantastic player and signing, hasn't he? Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I had the pleasure of playing with, with Lee for, for England. It was my last ever 
England camp and it was his first in 2012 and I got to see what he was about and a uh, fantastic player, fantastic uh, leader and uh, I think he's evolved into that role as his career has gone on but it's just unfortunate, you know, some players are uh, unfortunately they're blessed with uh, being injury prone and, and Lee is that type of player but he's done great to get to 32 is he, so he's done great to get to that level but these are the tools you trade, you know, you need these more than anything when you're playing in the middle and, uh, you know, with the, with the forwards and to have 11 surgeries, he's done fantastically well just to carry on as he has, but Ian Blees was right there, you've got a, you know, the rest of your life ahead of you, you know, there's no point in busting yourself playing this sport, it's only a, a short career, so, uh, you know, hopefully he'll uh, won't have any uh, injury effects going forward, but a uh, tremendous player. When he did sign for Salford, there was a few... Uh, Eyebrows raised, you know, is he over the hill? Is he, you know, are his, are his injuries going to uh, allow him to play for Salford? But he's been absolutely fantastic, you know, uh, instrumental in getting Salford to the grand final, getting Salford to the, the Challenge Cup final, and uh, led from the front. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, injury has, um, has won, won the battle, really. But, um, you know, he should be very proud of his career. Um, I, I was proud to, to play with him, but, um, you know, He's uh, to get to the, the way he has um, just shows the, the type of a person he is, and uh, you know the fight in his his belly. And um, you know, I wish I wish Lee all the best. And as a bloke as well, he's one of those people in the game that I've, I've never heard anyone say a bad word about him. It, whenever he comes up, it's always a, a glowing report from whoever you speak to about Lee. Very much so. And uh, he rang me not long ago. Actually, he's been granted a, a well-deserved testimonial in the in the game, which is fantastic for him. And he asked me, would I, uh, you know, go and have a chat at one of his dinners? And more than happy to do so. But you know, everyone he asked, you know, you won't find anyone uh, refusing him because, uh, you know, he's such a great guy. So uh, he will be missed. But he's been a great servant to every club he's been at and, and uh, the game of rugby league. So uh, all the best, Mossy. And the good news for Salford: Brody Croft coming over from the NRL and. He's a player that burst onto the scene a few years ago. He has fizzled out a little bit in that Brisbane team, as Bleasy alluded to there. But as we spoke about in that interview, Salford are a club in the last few years who have done a very good job at turning people's careers around. Yeah, well, let's hope it's going to be the, be the case again. Uh, you know, there's no doubt in his ability. You know, as a junior, he, he was touted as uh, the next big thing over in Australia. For one reason or another, he's not quite hit the, uh, hit the marks and uh, the expectations that was uh, put on him. But, you know, let's hope a, a new competition and a new lifestyle will uh, reinvigorate him. And uh, you've mentioned before Salford's ability to, to pick out these uh, players who are potentially waning and to, to get the best out of them. So uh, hopefully he'll come over and uh, do exactly that for Salford. And a big statement for Salford, a club who have had a lot of question marks over their future in the next few years, particularly around their stadium. And they've had a lot of upheaval with a new coach coming in, of course. So for them to come out and make a signing like this must be reassuring to their supporters. Yeah, reassuring. You know, it's a massive confidence statement and, uh, you know, Blees has pulled off a, a great coup there in signing, uh, you know, still only 24 year old, so his best years are in front of him. Uh, as I mentioned, his, his talent before. So, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the Salford fans will uh, uh, be really, really pleased about the uh, announcement. I'm sure they will be. And then it's onwards and upwards for the uh, mighty Red Devils. Well, that's another star in the Betfred Super League for next season. But this season, the race for the Man of Steel is hotting up and the rankings have gone dark. That means we will no longer know who is being awarded what points and who is top of the leaderboard between now and the end of the season. As it stands, Sam Tompkins is the man to catch, leading the table with 1.7 points per game. Jordan Abdul behind him on 1.6. Johnny Lomax in the mix as well. And it's slightly difficult to understand all this points per game system, Moz. I much prefer it when it's just three points on the table and you know who you are. <laughs> but Sam has been fantastic this season, that's undeniable. And you've got to fancy that if he keeps that form up, he'll be Man of Steel again like he was a few years ago. Yeah, you'd, you'd think Sam Tompkins and Johnny Lomax are the favourites out of the, uh, the bunch there, just because their teams are playing fantastically well. You know, it's easier to, to shine in a team that are confident and playing well. And Catalan Saints are the, are the top two teams in the competition. But I agree with you. I think this is the best season Sam Tonkins has had since he, he left the Super League uh, many, many moons ago. Was it 2012, 2013? But uh, this is his best year by far. And it's no surprise with Sam playing well. Catalans are flying high as well. So uh, really pleased for Sam. Uh, you know, with the form he showed, I thought it would have been a, a shoo-in for the World Cup at the end of the year. But, you know, that's not going to be... Uh, 
the case, but uh, you know he'll, he'll be open for uh, a great finish with uh, with his club. What I noticed about that table, Moz, is that it's all half backs and pivots. When are we going to get a separate competition that's just for prop forwards? <laughs> yeah, good, uh, good point. That I mean, the, the the old way they used to the mark the the Man of Steel was uh, they used to have a uh, a panel and uh, they just used to choose. And to be fair, they did tend to go towards the forwards and the more aggressive and. Uh, but now with this voting system, it's uh, people who uh, make the, the highlights and the uh, you know the the the, uh, the fancy passers of the try creators and try scorers. So I don't think we'll see many forwards getting the Man of Steel uh, award for uh, for a number of years. On that note, though, who up front, bearing in mind we've now got a World Cup 18 months away, who up front has impressed you this season? Because Alex Warmsley has been superb as we'd expect him to be, but there's a few others in there as well. Yeah, I think uh, Alex Warms has been uh, the best, the best front rower in uh, in Super League, in my opinion. I think Liam Farrell has been great. You know, so consistent there for uh, for, for Wigan, and I was delighted when he, he got a chance to play for England against the uh, against the Exiles, uh, you know, a few weeks ago. But yeah, I think uh, Chris Hill is you know consistent all the time. But I think that's one position we are uh, quite blessed in is uh, is the front row. We're uh, you know got a number of. Uh, players there vying for that position so yeah I'm just uh, I don't want to harp on about the World Cup but I was so looking forward to uh, seeing how England went against the, the best we the, the, against the best in the world but uh, but yeah if I, if I had to say anyone I'd say Alex Wormsley you know I think uh, w when I voted he's got my vote a couple of times with the Man of Steel I didn't see Alex in that list obviously but you know out of all the forwards I think uh, Alex would be would be up there with uh, Liam Farrell well, it's all to play for in the race for the Man of Steel. It's all to play for We're in the Betfred Super League. So in a couple of weeks' time, there'll be a few extra bragging rights on the line for the Betfred Super League Rivals Round. There is a tingling, tingling atmosphere of expectation and excitement. If there's one fixture that you can't lose, it's this one. Oh, oh it's it's, 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 it's Wellesby! Maguire! Kyle! Try this will be if they can do it. They are in. They are in. Luke Gale's in position. Drop goal from Gale. He's kept it. Agastin is there. Matty Ashton under the post. Tom Davis. What a try. He's got it. He's on target. He's got it. What a try from Young Donald McIntosh. Lulaway. Brilliant yeah. scoring. Here in person. That's what some fans were yeah. missing. With this strength, it's going to be another try. Halliwell, another try for Laura here. Well, this is astonishing play. Yeah, these are the games that we live for, aren't they, as rugby league fans? Moz, I think I'll be booking out the sofa and the TV for that weekend. Those games just must be so special to play in. Oh, absolutely fantastic! You know, it's, Super League is intense as it is, but with the, these games, just knock the intensity levels up a notch or two and. Uh, Everyone loves a derby, everyone loves a, a bragging rights, so I'm trying to get the bragging rights, so there's always, uh, tempers are always high and uh, you know, there's always a little bit more excitement, a little bit more going on in these games. Well, we've just got to hope, of course, that we don't have any COVID scares or upsets and that all of those games go ahead. That is in a week and a half time. This weekend, though, we've got some more fantastic action in the Betfred Super League. It kicks off Thursday night. St Helens versus Castle for Tigers, Moz and Cass after that win against Leeds. St Helens after that win against Catalans, two teams that the confidence will be at a high. It's going to be an interesting one because yeah. we know they both like to play football. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I think Castleford's results before the, the Challenge Cup final, I think you can put that to one side because they were just uh, concentrating on the Challenge Cup, you know, getting players ready and resting players, etc. And uh, a real confidence boosting win against the Leeds Rhinos away from home. So Castle come into that, you know, sitting, you know, quite, quite confident. And I thought they were... Uh, in that challenge got final, they were they were the best side in the first half, especially. You know, obviously, didn't get the win, but I think they'll go into that game confident. But if Castleford want to make the playoffs, they need to start winning, and uh, this is a, a great game. It'll be a great statement to to knock the uh, the mighty Saints off at the moment. At Catalan's Hull FC at the time of recording, we're still waiting to 
just find out a little bit more about this game. There are some question marks about Alessi and a few COVID issues, but let's assume that it does go ahead. Moz Catalans looking to bounce back from that defeat. They won't be panicking. They're still top of the league, but a good opportunity to show those champion credentials by bouncing back. Yeah, great, great opportunity. You're right. And uh, I mentioned before, uh, Steve McNamara wasn't uh, devastated by the loss at St. Helens. So the fact that they're on home soil against Hull, they'll be confident of getting the win and I'm pretty confident they will uh, get the win there especially. And then Hull Kingston Rovers, who really dug out a win against Lee. They were made to work really hard against Wigan, who similarly were made to work hard against Salford. Hull KR have been one of my teams of the season. They've lost a lot of games to COVID, or they have played. I've been really impressed. And I just fancy that at home as well, they might uh, cause Wigan a few questions, a few problems, ask a few questions. Oh, they, they definitely will. They'll, they'll, they'll give it a go. I'm just, uh, I'm not sure about the, the injury toll at the moment at Hull KR. I think they've lost their... Uh, a few key players, but you're right, they've been the surprise packages of the season. Uh, I'm not hugely surprised because I know how good an operator Tony Smith is. He's a fantastic coach. Gets no, the coach that you know well, of course. I do, yeah, yeah. He coached me at Warrington for, for a number of years and everywhere Tony's gone, he's got, uh, you know, success. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a different animal, Hull KI, you know, it's uh, it's not one of the one of the bigger, bigger sides or squads and he's just slowly going about his business. So they've had some great wins this year. Uh, but Wigan, they, they seem to be rejuvenated after uh, you know four or five weeks when they when they couldn't get a win. So uh, interesting game, but um, yeah, the fact that it's home, um, I can't really pick that one. I'll have to flip, flip, a, flip a coin for that one, Lewis. Lee versus Leeds. Lee, as we've just mentioned, got really close against Hull PR, but you wonder how much they put into that game, how much they'll have left against the Leeds team who are looking patchy at times this season but certainly at their best are a very good rugby league team. Yeah, yeah they've been in inconsistent haven't they but when they, are, when they do get it right they look uh, one of the better teams in, in the Super League so uh, they'll be looking to bounce back from a, a disappointing loss and uh, you know I watched the, the Lee and OKR game, I thought it was a fantastic game, it was a great great spectacle but uh, again it was pretty heartbreaking for the, for the Lee team and you know to put so much effort in and not get a result you know I agree with you, it's, we'll see how much it's Seems to have took out of him, but uh, they'll have to go for a, a Leeds victory there. And then Salford Huddersfield, this will be funny. And Watson's first trip back to the AJ Bell Stadium, he might wish that this one had been behind closed doors. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, knowing a few Salford fans, uh, I know they've got a little bit of, uh, I won't say hatred, but uh, strong passion uh, against Ian Watson at the moment. But, you know, it, it's all wrong in my opinion. For what he'd done for the club, I thought he was fantastic. He should be a hero there at Salford. But that's not how Salford uh, Rugby League uh, fans uh, treat the world. So he'll get a he'll get a, a warm welcome, warm reception there at the AJ Bell Stadium. But again, Salford have uh, rejuvenated. You know they've been playing uh, particularly well for the last couple of months. So um, Huddersfield have been winning, but just just by just uh, by midges. You know, so uh, I can't really pick this one. I have a I think home advantage might sway for Salford, but it'll be an interesting game either way. And then Wakefield Warrington, we could see a little bit more of George Williams, hopefully, in a Warrington shirt. Obviously, an intriguing one, seeing how he makes his return to Super League and a, a new club. And, uh, and Wakefield, a team that probably just want to get a couple of wins under their belts soon, just to, to keep themselves in the mix. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Warrington, again, they've been uh, very inconsistent this year. But when they do get it right, they look like uh, grand final winners. So I think I'll go for a, a, big, uh, a Warrington victory here. But I think Wakefield have been competing well, but just not quite got the uh, the personnel to, to to challenge these top sides. So uh, be great to see George Williams, uh, you know, with another run out for Warrington. But uh, I think Warrington now, if they've got any plans for for taking out the competition, they need to start making the run now. For all the bad stories that have been around rugby league with the World Cup, etc., in the last few weeks and COVID problems, this is quite an exciting time of the season because there's some fantastic games in that round. We then go into rivals around, as we've mentioned. Magic weekend on the horizon, which is always a fantastic weekend. And given what's happened in the last 18 months, it will just be brilliant to have rugby league fans back under one roof. And then you're into playoffs and grand final time. And there's still a lot of positions in that playoff system that are very much up for grabs. Oh, definitely. It's uh, really, really exciting at the, at the moment. So, you know, you just mentioned all them events coming up and the next couple of months are going to be fantastic for, for rugby league. And you know, the fact that you can have full stadiums again, it just adds to the... Uh, to the spice and the uh, and the atmosphere, so uh, I can't wait. You know, it's going to be great. I'm going to get to as many games as I can. I'm going to go up to Newcastle to the for the Magic Weekend, and then uh, 
you know, any any playoff game always always knock knock the intensity up two or three notches. So uh, can't wait for them. And you're right, there's going to be a, a battle before the playoffs, before the grand final, to make these positions. And then it's all to play for. Then so a number of clubs are going to be throwing their hat in the ring, and uh, can't wait. And in the last couple of days, actually, I think Warrington have shared on their social media a video of you scoring a try at Magic Weekend. I think it was at the Etihad. Some good memories for you of that weekend and that concept. Fantastic. I mean, uh, that was I mean, Magic Weekend when I was playing. We went up to Murrayfield, Cardiff. Um, but that was my favourite, not just because I scored the try, by the way, but, but, you know, City's ground. I just think for a rugby league heartland, you know, it's uh, right in the middle of Yorkshire, Lancashire and, you know, all the... All the crowd could access it, fantastic facilities. So I, I think they should bring it back to, to Man City's ground, but that's just my opinion. But I didn't score too many tries, Lewis, so to get one at the Magic Weekend was great. And the fact that there was only about a minute to go, so we didn't have to, after the try was scored, we didn't have to concentrate or anything. So all the boys had a bit of fun and they did a big pile on and I had about 10 lads on top of me. But uh, great memories and uh, you know, Magic Weekend was, was is a great concept. And uh, looking forward to that. And uh, I watched the clip and it brought back a few nice memories, you're right. And away from the Men's Betfred Super League, the Betfred Women's Super League has returned. The Women's Super League South is up and running. There's been a fantastic competition in the early weeks there. And then the silverware up for grabs this weekend in the wheelchair Bet, the Betfred Wheelchair Challenge Cup final, Leeds Rhinos and the Argonauts, who are based in Kent, go head to head. And Moz, it's all these little things, isn't it? Well, we're not little, but it's all these different parts of the game that make it so special and show that actually rugby league is still doing all right, isn't it? It's doing all right. It's doing, it's doing great. Like, let's be fair. I mean, it's as inclusive now as it ever has been. You've got all these different competitions, you know, the record number of kids have, uh, you know, since, since the restrictions have been lifted, you're hearing all these amateur clubs getting a load of kids through the gates, which is fantastic. Women's Rugby League's taking off, you know, it's taking on a, a different animal of its own, the, the Women's Super League and the, and the Wheelchair Rugby League. It's uh, absolutely fantastic, which makes it, you know, even more disappointing about the World Cup, but we're not harping on about that, Lewis. We're, uh, we drew a line under that now, but, you know, let's hope that the games, all the individual competitions keep growing and growing. And it just uh, manifests ne next year in, in a World Cup and it's uh, the biggest and best ever. And with all that in mind, a, a conversation that I know was had on the show last week, I know JP was a big advocate for it, and a lot of people talking about it. Let's see England in action this, this autumn after the grand final. A couple of tests against France maybe, or you know, Jamaica have put a pretty strong team together. There's obviously Wales, Scotland involved. If we could get all of those teams playing some international rugby at the end of this season anyway then you know, it'll be great for the international game, brilliant for the coaches and a build-up to a World Cup and a couple of test matches in France now that it's back on the amber list, Moz, might be a fantastic weekend. No, but it could be fantastic and uh, you know, the way French Rugby League is developing, the Catalan Dragons at the top of the Super League table, I think uh, it would be a tough uh, proposition for England to go over to France. Uh, you know, always tough surroundings when you when you do travel away. But I think it is important for England to get together. You know, uh, Sean Wayne's been coached for a couple of years now and played was it one game but you know uh, with, with what's been going on I think it's important you know it'll be a, a boost to the international game a boost to England and the more times the England squad can get together it'll be better preparation for the World Cup so uh, I think it's a fantastic idea you know they could play around Robin with Wales you know France and uh, I don't know Scotland uh, Ireland you know that all, all these teams are competitive at the moment so uh, you know hopefully they'll do something but uh, for all these kids, it's important to see England Rugby League in action and um, hopefully winning. Well, Moz, thank you for joining us and thank you for tuning in. It's a big week as we lead into a big couple of months in the Betfred Super League and we're going to keep the positive Rugby League vibes flowing here on the last tackle. So thank you again for tuning in and we'll leave you with the contenders for try of the week. Hello and welcome to the Our League Try of the Week. I'm Dave Woods. Let's have a look at this week's contenders. First up this week, some absolute brilliant handling by Leeds against Castleford and a fantastic finish by Ash Handley in the corner. 
Try two, London against Toulouse. It actually starts with London in possession. Jared Samet with a kick and a chase here, but it bounces nicely for Mark Carella, who turns it into gold dust with his break from fullback right down the field. He's got Elwa Pellissier in support, and in turn, it's Jonathan Ford who strides away to score. Try three, spirited effort by Lee against Hulkingston Rovers. Keenan Brand with a break and the pass. Junior Sow with a very powerful finish. This is try four and this is Featherstone up against Batley. Batley very close to that Featherstone line until suddenly Dane Chisholm stepped in and then with no one to beat, it's all about his pace to take him all the way down to the other end of the field. Try five sees a game at Butts Park Arena. Coventry, the hosts, but it's North Wales Crusaders who are scoring here. And Jordy Gibson, who finally gets on the end of this handling move to finish by the side of the sticks. And finally, a game between London Broncos and Bedford Tigers women. And this is Lil Stanton of Bedford. Wonderful turn of pace and surging past the cover. You know what to do. Get voting for your favourite try this week.